Hello and welcome to the video. In this video we're going to be taking our first look at this quad here. This is the new Coppice one from Hollybro. So they're continuing to name all their products after weapons. So we had a look at some of the technology that's actually inside this little guy. We looked at their Atlatl, apologies if I'm saying that wrong again, uh, video transmitter. Uh, and surprise, surprise, we've actually seeing it in here installed as well. It's got the Hollybro flight controller and it looks like a custom frame that they've designed too, but more of that in a second. But everything else in here seems to be pretty industry standard components. They have a run cam camera at the front, a Swift, which is actually a nice camera. The Swift Mini has Air 40 2205 2450KV motors. It's spinning uh, pretty standard props. I know a lot of racers are probably looking at those and thinking of lots of other props that they would prefer to put on. But I think this is a quad designed for those who want to go very quickly, who are looking for something that's a little bit more standard in the way it's designed and built, but don't want to go and actually build it themselves. Now, this is the bind and fly model. This has come with an FR Sky receiver. And not sure if you can see in there, but it's actually a real FR Sky receiver. So the binding was a piece of cake and the setup was too. So let me just talk through some nice touches that I've spotted on this little chap. First of all is that use of industry standard components. The other quad uh, that I really like from Hollybro was the X1. Now I know some people had issues with that because the way it was designed, all the electronics were on one central circuit board. So if you had a bit of a problem, then you had to replace the entire circuit board and that wasn't cheap. The way this little guy is designed is it's very, very standard with the flight controller at the bottom and the power distribution board. You've got the Atlatl uh, video transmitter at the top. You've got an FR Sky receiver. You've got standard motors, standard camera, uh, and some other bits and pieces too. So actually looking at this thing, if you did have a problem, you're not gonna have to rip and replace very large, expensive proprietary pieces. You can just buy yourself another flight controller or video transmitter. And if you wanted to later on, you could potentially, if you wanted to get into your soldering iron, actually change things out and change how this thing flew. So I think that's a really welcome departure from Hollybro because it now means that if you aren't feeling like you're up to actually building something like this from scratch, you could get a model like this and then it also provides a platform for you to tinker onto too. The way it's been designed, and you can see the Hollybro is definitely trying to impress with this model, is the screws and the posts are all anodized and color coded with the motors and everything is countersunk and flush. There is no chance of your battery underneath in a hard crash getting damaged by a head that's proud of the carbon fiber. Little touches like there is actually, I'm not sure if you can get it on the camera here, but there's a little anodized metal bracket that's screwed into the bottom plate that the video antenna is connected to. So the video antenna is pretty connected because it's that kind of stretched X style layout. But even so, that should be a nice option that will bend a little bit in the event of a crash rather than snap off and destroy your model. The frame itself is five millimeter thick uh, and I'm not sure you can see this. I'll do some close up shots but it is really, really well finished. Uh, all of the edges have kind of been chamfered down and there's uh, a really nice fit and finish on the carbon fiber. So it does feel very much like a quality frame. Now, there are lots of other frames uh, like this, uh, GEP and lots of other kind of people make similar ones, but not in exactly the same way. The other thing you'll notice is how flat this thing is. And uh, I was surprised when the case arrived and I started to unpack everything. So this is the box it comes in. And again, when you first get it, you look at the box and you think, oh, hang on a minute, something's gone wrong here. Is this a some assembly required model? And then when you open the box and slide the case out, and the case is really nice too. It's a great way to keep the model safe. I don't think it would survive lots of uh, bangs and crashes. You couldn't stow it into main cabin luggage and expect it to come out the other side, but it does let you keep the model out of the way and it's handy for transporting all the bits. There's also potentially a bit of room in here for a couple of batteries as well if you were going to the field. 
Once you've got it open, then there is the model itself. It's held in place by that Velcro strap and it's all ready to rock and roll. It's all assembled. You get a run cam GoPro style mount at the top and that's ready to connect and it even provides some cable ties in the bag of accessories. You get a spare set of props in case you manage to break them and a bag of bits which includes those cable ties and also things like the on-screen display joystick for the Swift Mini camera as well. No manual in here, you're going to have to download that from the Hollybro site. The manual itself is very nice and well laid out. So now we've had a look at that, let's very quickly jump into Betaflight and I'll show you what I found when I connected to Betaflight and just had a look around at the setup. And I'd always recommend, if you're going to get a bind and fly, you go in and check these things anyway. So standard USB connector at the side, plug that little guy in and we're away. And the nice thing that you can spot straight away is in the top right hand corner there's some data in the data flash. That means that this flight controller has been armed and that probably means that there's been some kind of testing at the factory before this thing was shipped. Personally I always like to see a little bit of data in the data flash. You can go and have a look and see what they were doing with your model before you got it but it is definitely an indication that the system has been powered and the system has also been run as well and armed. So there's the port set up. Uh, very nicely, the smart port enabled on UART 1, so that probably means we can get our telemetry back to the radio. And also on UART 6, you can see that it's set for IRC Tramp. And because the Hollybro Atlatl FPV transmitter, uh, it talks IRC, it does mean that we can change the bands, frequency, power, and all that goodness inside the on-screen display in Betaflight. Set for D-Shot 600, but I think the ESCs on this can actually support a higher speed, but it flies really nicely with D-Shot 600. 8 kilohertz gyro update frequency by default, 2K PID loop frequency, only the accelerometer is enabled. Telemetry is turned on, LED strips turned on, black box is turned on, so it's air mode and OSD. And we also have VBAT and a current monitoring as well, so we'll be able to track that in the on-screen display. PID tuning looks like that, and it's not bad out of the box, actually. It's uh, reasonably good. I think Hollybro have put a bit of time and effort into trying to get that something like. The standard settings for it are auxiliary 1 is your arm switch, and auxiliary 2 is your mode switch. Now, by default, the only things that are set up is exactly as you see it on the screen. So I would go in here and potentially change a couple of things around. Uh, it does have a buzzer and LEDs at the back, so I would also have a look at going and setting up the buzzer function on another auxiliary input and doing those things as well. Binding the radio because it's a real FR Sky receiver is a piece of cake and they have mounted it so you can actually get to the bind button so there's no messing about. OSD looks like that, pretty standard stuff. And the LED setup by default looks like that with a Larson effect in that slightly uh, horrendous violet pink colour. The really nice surprise is that looking at this it's running Beta Flight 3.2, dated April the 6th. Now, I suspect that that is a pre-release version, so depending on how you find your model, it might be worthwhile updating to the final latest and greatest version. So now we've talked about that, let's go out to the field and give it a fly. So the all-up weight of the model for this video is about 485 grams. The model without a battery is about 310. I'm using a 4S graphene, Turnigy Graphene 1.3 pack and this is one of the early test flights. I've dropped the camera down from the whacking 45 degrees that it comes with to a more normal for me kind of 28 30 degree forward tilt that's why we're getting all the prop in there but at the 45 degree tilt that you get out of the box it has no prop in there at all and hopefully what you can see from this flying around just flipping and rolling here uh, the PID settings are pretty good they're not absolutely perfect. I'm sure pilots that have been flying racing quads for a long time would immediately open beta flight and start tinkering with the rate and the PID settings. But for those of you that aren't into all that stuff, or maybe this is the first aggressive powerful quad that you've bought, it's pretty good out the box. This is a way for you to buy a very fast capable quad that's upgradable and swappable. Also, with the tune being pretty good out the box, it does mean as you progress and you get better and more comfortable flying something like this, you can tweak those PID settings and rates to suit your style and how you like to fly. As a little exercise, I thought I'd try and figure out how much all of this stuff would cost if you individually bought all of the pieces. And what I've done here is broken down all the individual elements that are in this quadcopter and assigned a value. Now, you could probably argue that the frame is not a 70 pound frame, it might be a 40, 
£80 frame. I think less than that is probably going to be underselling it a little bit because it is really, really well made and the way it's all anodized and set up is really good. But you can see the kind of cost that I was getting to at the bottom. If you consider what it's selling for on places like Banggood, at the moment it means you get all the components built, ready to rock and roll, with a half decent tune and a carrying case and spares for less money. So it would actually cost you more if you went out and bought the parts, which isn't always the case with these ready to fly quads. There's usually a 30, 40, 50 dollar premium because the manufacturers put it all together. So in summary, if you're already a racing person, you've probably identified half a dozen things that you'd want to change it to suit the way that you fly. If you are a new pilot, I probably wouldn't recommend this as your first or second quad. This is probably the one that you get when you're getting half decent because it really does have a turn of speed. But it's one of those quads that you could live with for quite a long time by swapping and changing things out, by also changing and tweaking the PID settings. The fact it comes with the latest version of Betaflight, although it looks like a pre-release, means that it's going to be a relevant set up and technology set for quite a while yet. The only thing I probably would say is the props are absolutely fine and they work great with the model out of the box but if you're looking to get the most out of this model I would probably look at a set of props that have variable pitch along the blades because that's what this is really crying out for. It's a very capable racing machine, beautifully built and pretty good value for money when you figure out what all the individual pieces cost. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organised into easy to use playlists so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject we organise all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing, then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.